Back to the war in Ukraine, where tonight a U.N.-appointed panel has issued a damning statement concluding Russia has committed war crimes with victims as young as four. As Ukrainian forces have regained control of territory in the east, they are finding scenes of horror. That's most evident in the city of Izium, where the only thing more haunting than the mass graves are the shell-shocked survivors left behind to pick up the pieces, as ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge saw firsthand. We must warn you that some of the images you are about to see are disturbing. It is a chilling scene. Endless lines of crosses in a forest. And there is little dignity for the dead here. Very few of the graves have names. These graves here are marked 256, 254, 258. Most of the graves here are marked only with numbers, but inside the ground here are people's mums, dads, brothers, sisters, and even children. This giant burial site in the city of Izium only discovered when Ukrainian forces pushed Russian troops out of this northeasterly region. The site now a symbol of Russia's brutality in Ukraine. Well, this is one of the grimmest scenes you can ever witness. One of the investigators has just written on this body bag, 92, anonymous man. The area becoming a giant crime scene. Forensic teams carefully exhuming hundreds of dead bodies from the ground. Ukrainian officials saying many of the victims met a violent death and some of the bodies show signs of torture. Well, the forensic team here have just removed the body of a man from one of the unmarked graves, and it's obvious that he had his hands tied behind his back. The anguish of relatives like Ludmilla impossible to comprehend. So Ludmilla is showing us to the grave of her husband. She says so many people have died. Too many people, she says. Ludmilla's husband killed by an airstrike in the days after Russia invaded. Written on a piece of paper in Ludmilla's hand are numbers. Okay. So Ludmilla says numbers 27 and 107 that she's written on this piece of paper. She doesn't know which of those numbered graves her mother-in-law's body could be in. Adding to the pain and confusion, the fact that some graves here contain more than one body. This was a mass grave that contained the bodies of Ukrainian soldiers. It's written on the wooden cross which marked it, 17 men from Izium from the morgue, and prosecutors say that one of the bodies showed signs of torture. But most of those buried here are civilians, and we found the graves of children too. So two girls aged six and nine. Prosecutors investigating how the most innocent died. Yevgen, do we know how these children were killed? As Russian forces moved into Izium, this building was badly bombed killing those sheltering inside. More than 40 people were killed in this apartment block when it was struck in the early days of the war. Entire families wiped out. And we're told many of the victims are buried in that mass burial site in the forest nearby. You were in the building when it was hit. Uh, this is my apartment. We met Sergei, who was inside with his mum when the missiles landed, killing so many of his neighbours and friends. People who died in your apartment block are buried in the forest. How does that make you feel? I feel nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Every day we saw bodies, parts of bodies. I feel nothing. You're used to it after six months of war. Addressing the UN, President Zelensky comparing the killing in Izium to the atrocities in Bucha when Russian forces retreated from areas near Kiev in the spring saying the only difference was that victims in Izium were buried, whereas in Bucha they were scattered on the streets. How can we allow the Russian army somewhere on Ukrainian soil, knowing that they are committing such mass murders everywhere? We cannot. And like Bucha, 
the horror stories in Izium only coming to light because the Russians retreated. Russian flags now in the trash and placed under the doormat into the mayor's office. The Ukrainian flag flying again. For months in Izium, no running water, no electricity and no gas. People here are in need. Well, you can hear and see how desperate these people are for humanitarian aid. They've been living under Russian occupation for months and they still live close to the front line. Waiting in line, Tanya, a mum, getting food. Tanya, what was life like under the Russians? It was unbearable, she tells us. The Russians would just appear, point a gun at you and threaten to shoot. And on the outskirts of the city, Ukrainian troops removing Russian tanks, abandoned when Russian forces fled. Well, the Ukrainian offensive has taken thousands of square miles of territory all around here. But as you can see, the Ukrainian military very active in this area. Soldiers also clearing up near the burial site, removing explosives left by Russian troops. And this the first time Volodymyr is able to visit the graves of three members of his family. They died in an airstrike, he told us, from Russian fascists. What is your feeling towards the people, the Russians, that did this? Hate, he says. Anger and hate. Just identifying some of the bodies will be hard. The workload for Ukrainian prosecutors, overwhelming. Nikolai, what's it like to work here, to do this job? Alexander arriving here looking for answers, holding a photo of his son. A son called Alexander. His son, also called Alexander, went missing a month ago when Russian soldiers raided his apartment. Alexander's son, Alexander, had picked up a Ukrainian military jacket that he found, and potentially that was the only crime he committed in the eyes of the Russian authorities. People in Izium telling us that the Russians ruled through fear and violence. For months, this burial site covering up their alleged crimes. Now, the truth is being dug up. But if more of their land is liberated from the Russians, Ukrainian officials believe they will discover a pattern of death and killing again. What an unbelievably dark time for that country. Our thanks to Tom for his careful and thoughtful reporting. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.